thought that you knew it all. Greetings, I'm Madame X here on The Collective. Welcome. We have with us a very distinguished guest, Johnny from Queens, New York. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Thank you for having me. Wonderful place and uh, wonderful host. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Johnny, we go back uh, quite a few years, uh, yes, back you. to 97, 98, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, around that time, saw so you doing the uh, performances on stage, uh, reciting poetry, and uh, it was, I thought it was... I thought it was wonderful. Oh, uh, I thought thank it was very, you. very, you know, well wrote out. I just wish that the audience showed it a little more respect, but it was not the right well, venue. It, right, it was at a club. I believe right. this was one of uh, either the um, Vampire Balls yeah, that was, was at the, the vault. Balls. Oh, back, back, back in 97, 98, something I've like that. I've actually been the Coney Island High Place, but I'm not sure. Mm, I think places. it was at the vault. I Definitely New York. In any, in yes, any indeed, indeed, right. indeed. And you yourself are a very talented poet and very creative as well. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about your creative uh, ventures? Uh, well, I'm mostly uh, visual storytelling, you might say, uh, filmmaking, more or less. Um, and from the and more often than not, um, it's always vampires um, or and most el most of the more interesting elements of the occult that are my muse. Um, it was just something that I wanted to be able to write about around the time that I was reading source material from a book by uh, Basil Copper. I forget the actual name of the book, but um, I know it was something that I got from the library. I needed to do research on a project that I wanted to make. Uh, it was kind of silly back then, vampire superhero thing. Oh, cool. uh, you know, somebody <laughs> who uses the powers of the vampire to help people rather than kill them. Um, but that was back during like the very early times, and I really didn't know as much back then as I do now. What is back then? Five years ago? Ten years ago? Um, I'd say it has, has to go back as far as 92, around that time, definitely as the 1990s were coming in. Uh, back then, uh, role-playing games like Vampire the Masquerade were just coming into vogue, and um, it just started to get more... It's, interest, it's interesting, too. I mean, before then, uh, more of my focus uh, when I was young, since uh, transformation really is, is my kind of... It, is a kind of a stimulating thing to me as a, as a, uh, as a writer. Um, werewolves were big with me. Uh, but that kind of dissolved into vampires. See, my whole thing about vampires back then, I really didn't see too much of it because I thought when you get killed by a vampire, you get possessed by a devil, and then you wake up and it's not you anymore. It's just a devil using your body. Mm -hmm. But in time after having done the research that I'd done, I grew out of that kind of thinking and became a little, and as a consequence, it became a little more fascinating to me. So what is your perspective on vampirism today? Um, well, I feel that uh, most of the, most of the uh, media elements out there right now, um, they're on. They're kind of walking a tightrope on this uh, on this perspective, and it's bothering me in some cases. But thankfully, there are elements out there that have just come into existence. I'd say for about the past, say, three or four seasons on HBO, uh, that have come into vogue in a very, in a very, in a way that honors the vampire rather than just uses them as a means to, you know. Play, play at high camp and stuff. Forgive me, I don't watch too much TV. Can We're talking you tell about me? True Blood. A True Blood, yes, indeed. Uh, okay. Alan Ball's little masterpiece based on uh, based on a book series that was written. Um, I forget exactly who the, the author was, but very popular out there right now. I'm collecting episodes on DVR as we speak, and I'm just getting through season one. Mm -hmm. I have to catch up from there. <laughs> so you actually would recommend those individuals that are interested in the vampire culture and in the vampire myth um, to watch True Blood? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, there might be some aspects. Like I said, I'm still kind of fresh on, on True Blood. I'm respecting every episode as I watch them. I might find some elements, since I'm notoriously picky about the vampire uh, representation, like, for example, with uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer that just completely turned me off. Oh, really? Did. I'm not a fan of uh, Buffy's representation. Uh, how about the new, uh, the new uh, films, uh, New Moon and uh, okay. Twilight, uh, Eclipse? Unfortunately, that's kind of like a dirty word to me. Um, I have no respect whatsoever for the Twilight franchise. Um, I Because, and this is by Stephanie, author Stephanie Meyer's own admission, um, she hasn't really done very much research I mean, she said, she admitted later, I mean, I read a, an article uh, online, and not from fans, but this was taken actually from legitimate sources, uh, that she didn't really do a lot of research on vampires when she was writing this thing. 
At the same time, I can kind of understand why she was doing it. I mean, she was trying to appeal to younger readers. Uh, but still, I just, I cannot bring myself to, uh, to exist. As a matter of fact, uh, my first exposure to the very first film, twi- the very first film in the Twilight series, I uh, was actually with friends, and we couldn't help as we were watching it, but to just go after it the way uh, they do on this program, Mystery Science Theater 3000, <laughs> where they talk back Absolutely. to uh, movies in a very, you know... Humorous way, right? In a very humorous right. way, exactly. Right, right, right. We just couldn't, we just... You know, it's like the you see the the Indian face going by, looking very, looking very serious. Like so, the, so perhaps you might approve of uh, Vampire Suck. Have you heard of that one? As a matter of fact, I saw a preview for that one, and it really didn't. <laughs> that didn't impress me either, because I could tell you stories. Um, because I mean, they're made by people who just don't know how to do parodies. <laughs> okay. So um, how about you? Um, are you involved in filmmaking right now? Yes. If uh, you were going to have your input uh, mm-hmm. represented in either a film or a mm-hmm. series, uh, how would you represent the vampire? Well, I just do it. I mean, uh, I have my own interpretations of vampires. I mean, uh, which are which are that. Um, well, I mean, you, you have varying perspectives of va- va- vamp- excuse me, vampires out there. Um, but I think the best representations of vampires have always been uh, ever, that have come out of since the Hammer days, the Hammer Films days, with Christopher Lee and uh, you know fangs in the mouth and pale skin, no latex whatsoever. I mean, you know, it's not like you have to make them look all ugly and stuff unless you were trying to justify them turning into bats. But uh, I keep it very traditional in terms of my representation. Mm, how about of the eyes? Contacts? No contacts? Yeah, contacts. Ab- absolutely. As a matter of fact, I feel the ideal is when you look at the eye, uh, the color around the blackness of the eye needs, to, I feel, needs to be red to represent the blood, and the eye should be bloodshot. So, in your opinion, uh, the vampire should be a blood drinker? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. that's because otherwise they're they're separated from normal people. I mean, uh, that's part of their allure. I mean, they, they're they very, very powerful aspects of the occult. They're very powerful aspects of the undead. They're just like ten steps above zombies um, who are brainless, of course, uh, but these actually have animated intelligence uh, that stretches. And they, the other fascinating thing, this is something I really wanted to explore once I go a little further in filmmaking, is to be able to show vampires with the world as their uh, as their backstory, they're able. Like for example, I've always had a I've always had a vision of um, having a history teacher, human human environment in a schoolroom, where the history teacher is actually teaching the students in some aspect of history. All right, and they wants and this his, this history teacher wants people to look at a history book in preparation for an exam. And your vampire would be an immortal being with uh, personal... With actual knowledge, knowledge of this aspect of history. Exactly. But here's the rib. Uh-huh. Here's because the, there's got to be a rib to make it interesting. Because you're looking at the history book. This, the, this vampire would basically be looking through the history books. He'd see the time period in which he lived, and he'd see all the lies that were in there. Because oh, he was right. actually there. Right, right, right. So I would think it would certainly be on more wide appeal than Twilight would ever be. To have that vampire be able to show that person, and maybe even lament in that respect, about the times as they really were. Obviously, this kid would be pushing the prospect of a failing grade, but he'd know. Because would somebody he, who would was this there, kid be a high school student, or a college student, or what age? One. Really? One. It really? Could, could be uh, could be college age, could be uh, high school age. I would think probably college is a little more because um, with college you can be a little more uh, um, detailed, so to speak. I mean, you know, they give you a little more leg room to be able to, you know, the term papers and thesis and so forth. So I think that kind of uh, that kind of an approach would be acceptable there. Now, do you have a website? Where can we get in touch with you? Uh, well, right now I'm working on a. Um, I'm working on a completely different uh, kind of a film series, kind of like a debut series, a uh, non-profit. Uh, it's kind of based on the Star Wars universe, but okay. I plan on working on other things from a vampire perspective. In fact, my next project is going to be vampire-related based on uh, the shows that we've been doing uh, in New York City. Excellent. And um, where can we find out more information about that? Well, the best I can do is recommend uh, my Facebook page. Oh, terrific. <laughs> um, and in there, of course, you can, um, you can search... Uh, I would think you'd probably have to search by way of um, 
the, the project that we're doing. It's, it's Tremors of the Force, uh, Star Wars Tremors of the Force. We're working on that project right now. Uh, and I'm, I'm on there. I'm the director, writer, and uh, I have a cameo in there. Uh, but I just keep creative. It's very, very important that I keep creative. Terrific. Thank you so much for sharing your perspectives. And thank you for joining us uh, here on The Collective. Don't forget to subscribe to our videos. We are on YouTube and on Vampire lounge.com. I'm Madame X of House of the Dreaming. Thank you for joining us.